Hello there, this is Alejandro and on this video we will be creating an interactive keyboard like the one that you're watching here. This was uh, something that we published a few weeks ago and it was a keyboard for a calculator type of design. And the way this works is that when you type on your own keyboard, the keys on the experience react to your keys. So it's really satisfying and it's very nice. Um, so on this tutorial, we will actually be building something similar. It's more like a simplified version, but it contains the same logic. If we go here to the play mode, you can see if I press the number one, number two, zero and enter. It will change this right again zero two one enter so we will see how to build this little mini keyboard of just four letters but the logic and the process for building something like this is the same as building one um pretty big keyboard right all right so in order to create our keyboard the first step is to build one individual key so let me just remove this rectangle and I'm going to paste here an image that I got from Google just for reference of how the keys are. You can see it's like a cube, but they have like a little curvature in the top and they also have some bevels on the edges, right? So let's put this image on a side and let's press command R to reset my view and let's hide the image for now and let's just create a cube now, right? So this cube is gonna be my key. Let's reset its position. And now let's just uh, disable the grip because we don't need it and also disable the snapping because we also don't need that. Now, the first step is to convert this shape into a smooth subdivision shape. And I'm going to disable subdivision and I'm going to make this uh, more like this, which is closer to the, the shape of the key, right? And now I'm going to increase subdivision again. You can see that obviously this is not what we want. So what we can do is that we can start adding subdivisions here. So I'm, going to, I'm using the lob cube to add more subdivisions here. And now I can use the edge slice so we can move this to the bottom. Now it's almost like right there. And now I can create another subdivision or edge loop. And now I can use the edge slice and move it to the top. And what we have right now looks more like a cylinder than um, like an actual key. But if we add more subdivisions, you will start seeing the shape to emerge. Um, so you can see now it's closer to a natural key, but it's not enough yet, right? So what we can do is that we can have more subdivision and more subdivision until we get something closer to the shape of a key. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much close to how the, the keys are. And another, one thing that we can do actually is that we can select the top bar here on the corners right and i'm pressing shift so i can add more um, points to this uh, selection and it works like that as well with the faces and now i can go into i'm going to press on the circle of the pivot here and then um, i'm going to press shift to make this a little more round i think something along yeah that, that should work you can see it's a little more round the top now and in the bottom is sharp which is good, all right? So let's see this from the front. And now um, we can select this, uh, click and drag to create a selection, and then we can move a little here so we can create this slightly curvature right there. So we have slightly curvature, maybe a little more, just a little more. All right. So now that we have our key, let's just start working a little on the scene. Let's make um, a background um, a little more bright here. And now um, let's put this, this light on a side, maybe on this side, and maybe a little more to the top. And now let's work on the color here. I'm going to create a material. So I'm going to click here on the four dots, create a material asset, rename this asset to key. Um, and now I'm going to start like changing the color here, but I'm going to use uh, a depth or like a 3D gradient instead. And then I'm going to move it below the lighting and I'm going to remove this one here. And now I'm going to start working on the color for this. I want it to be a little um, like dirty, right? Like dirt. Um, so something like this should work. 
and I'm gonna make sure that I'm going to use an, an overlay here for this uh, key, right? And that seems to be working about right. Maybe um, some more like this could work. And also, I want to have like a linear, another another uh, layer like that one, but this one is gonna be more like linear and it's going to be pointing to the white direction and i want it to be more like you know some sort of dirt coming on the bottom part so i'm going to reverse the color actually and then this one is going to be also dark so i'm going to put this one dark and maybe we can reduce now the opacity yeah so that's gonna be the first one I can also change the background to be more like this so it much better the key um, we will be kind of like refining this a little more for now let's also put this below the lighting by the way maybe we can reduce a little more the opacity so I'm going to put my camera in the top and I want to write a basically a letter or a number let's say this is one maybe this is i don't know like um, 72 or something right um so this is gonna be actually a little more small maybe 64 yeah that makes sense yeah maybe it could be like here so this is gonna be our number one and now let's group these two into by pressing command G and let's call it key one. And now let's press command D to duplicate and create a couple of more. Now let's put my camera here so we can see it from the top like that. And then let's select these two and duplicate again. And this now will be something like this. And now let's select all of them and we can put them all right in the middle around here. And if we reset our view by pressing Command R, you can see it's right there in the middle, right? Now we have four keys. And then um, I want to change the color of just this letter to be orange, but let me just detach it first. And let's create another material here. And this is gonna be key orange. And now on this key orange, I can change um, the color to be more like um, orange right and also uh, let me just close this and put it from here so we have more screen space and then this should be perhaps uh, more like this let's see how we can kind of like find like a good balance here yeah, this could be something like along the lines. Maybe this needs to be more like this. Let's see. I believe that we kind of need to make this a little more like this. And also this needs to be, oh yeah, that's much better. And now let's press here and say go and maybe this could be white instead right so it has, has like more kind of like um contrast there well what is off is that usually when you have a very saturated color it's gonna be bouncing light into the other ones which are gray so that's called global illumination and so light is bouncing across right now what we can do is that we can because this is another material here what we can do is that we can create um, a depth layer, another 3D gradient basically, but this one is gonna be used in a world position. And instead of being there, it could be placed uh, in the middle of this, this key here. And then we can make it bigger. So it's going to affect the other keys in there. And now what we can do is that we can change it to be maybe more like orange, right? Very saturated, it doesn't matter because you will see later what we can do there and then we can use this here and now we can put this below the light so you can see oh there it is maybe it's too much 
the impact is too much it should be maybe less like something like this probably yeah and uh, you know what actually perhaps uh, yeah that's better okay and also something that we can do is that um, we can go here maybe this seems a little too much it's not this one um yeah i think that's better okay now uh, let's go again to the top here and let's draw the base so i'm going to create a little rectangle for the base make sure that it's on zero here and now let's have some subdivisions i mean some ground colors i'm sorry and um yeah let's just make sure that these four are actually centered right so make sure that these four are more centered there right there um let's uh change this to font so this receive light and let's put it on the bottom part and then let's increase the extrusion so they can can actually cover a little bit of this and maybe maybe even more like this i think that makes a lot of sense and then let's increase the bevel and also the bevel size maybe a little more even like that and now let's create another one here and we can make it bigger and this should be more bright and if we go to the top we can now change a um, few things here we can change like the round corner to kind of like match better yeah, that's a little better there and then uh, we can make these uh, closer to the other one something like that and this probably could be darker I want this to be more dark yeah something along the line and this could be something like this and now our keys our keys i think our keys could be more bright in the top and more dark in the bottom part right so what we can do now here is that we can probably increase yeah i think that looks a lot better all right so if we reduce the background a light so now it's uh it's looking a little better so just select there and put two and then this one here could be um zero so maybe we can change this one names to be zero and this is two and this is go so we had go and actually we change this all to keyboard uh, tutorial Right, so now we have a keyboard. We have good lighting here. Um, we could probably improve a little bit here the darkness of this one here in the bottom. Actually, this one I think it should be world um, because that way when you move the object, it's gonna keep the, the same darkness there. Because right now, for example, if I move this object to the bottom, it's not uh, it's moving with the object, but if we put it as a world it will uh, stay there so we can do the same here and now if I move this object you can see it there stays dark uh, which works better I'm going to start like adding some events so we can move these letters so how can we do this effect right so you create a new a new state in this new state you move the key to the bottom and then you create an event for the key being down and then uh, you change uh, here this is gonna be when I press the number two and what is gonna happen is if I play this right now if I press the number two it's going to animate there but it's taking too long so let's make this more like um, 0.1 I think um, and I press two and now it's fast but it stays on the bottom so we need to add another event which is key up so when the mouse is up now it's going to transition to the base state the same time 0.1 in duration and it's going to be also number two so when i play this now and i press two now it's working right um, 
Okay, that's great. We just now need to repeat the same process. And for this go, we don't have any key that is called go, but it may be, it could be like enter. So key down and key up. This one is returning to base state. 0.1, 0.1, and then it's gonna be enter. Right? We can literally just type there enter and it's going to recognize it as the enter key. Now let's pull all of these um, objects to the base state, right? We have all of our keys to the base state. And now if I play this and I press one, two, zero, and enter. And we have our interactive keyboard. Yes, and that's how you can build your interactive keyboard. You can also go and do a lot more, obviously, if you want to. You can have a full keyboard, um, but this is just an example of how you can be build these type of experiences on Spline. You can also export these as um, public URL that you can embed or share um, you can put it on your Webflow page or you can insert these or on your custom development project. So, yes, stay in tune. We will work on new tutorials. Bye-bye.